Hey there, Master Gardener, Shannon Mallory here. I'm going to go over real quick with you guys how to enter hours in online. Um, seems relatively simple uh, with the little bit that I have done. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to go to whatever web browser you use, whether that be Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, there's a couple of other ones out, out there, but whatever one you use to get to the Internet. I use Google Chrome, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this over. My home page is Google. If you need to get to Google, go to google.com, and it'll bring it up to you. How I get to the Master Gardener website to log my hours in, I go. I just search Oklahoma State University or Oklahoma State University Master Gardener Program, Oklahoma State Master Gardener Program, and search for it. So there, there it pulls up. We get a couple of things. The one that you'll want to go to, and let me see if I can zoom into this here a little bit bigger. The one you'll want to go to is the one that says Oklahoma State Master or Oklahoma Master Gardeners, specifically apps.dasner.okstate.edu with the backslashes and Master Gardener. Um, I'll go ahead and click this so that we know which one we've gone to. Let me make that a little bit bigger. All right, so it's the, this is the welcome page. Uh, that we have here. So just kind of tells you a little bit about what you're doing. I luckily already have an account, so I actually need to log out. So we're we're logged out. And if you're already got if you already have one, I think I read off the names in the meeting of who was there. We'll go from there uh, if you for whatever reason can't sign in or something like that. So what you're gonna want to do if you have not signed up at all, you're gonna want to go to sign up. Alright? This will bring us up to this page. It is a pretty much, a pretty standard sign up page. Um, you would enter in your email. So mine is shannon.mallory oh, at okstate.edu. A password, this is where you would create your own password. It seems like there's no requirements for you know numbers, letter, and stuff like that. And then you would then go ahead and confirm that password. You would then type in your first name, Oop. last name, and then this is probably the key one for county. We'll want to go ahead and do K County, um, unless you're one of our folks who is servicing another county for some reason. You'll want to make sure that you have that corresponding county. Be careful too. See how it's got the blue around it? If I scroll, that can sometimes change the county. It didn't there, but I've, I've seen it happen before in the past. And then you would go ahead and click this save button here. That should send you an email to the email address that you put in that box in order for you to verify that you are real. Like I said, whenever I got set up, it got set up by somebody else, so I actually haven't practiced that. Um, once you get that verification email, it should send you something uh, relatively quickly, let's say in, the, in five minutes, that way you know that you signed up. This last checkbox, opt in, that's a decision that you can make. They'll send you, let me go ahead and move me, that'll send you um, emails about events and stuff like that, which I guess most of y'all might be interested in. So go ahead and sign up for that if you'd like. All right, so I'm gonna go back to that home page because I already am logged in. All right, so you've got yourself signed up. The next thing you wanna do is to go ahead and log in and log hours in. All right, so you'll go ahead and click this login button up here, log in. You will type your email address in. And then you will type in your password, which is gonna take me a sec, mine is all kinds of numbers and letters. and then you will click login. If those of you who have forgot your password, um, I do have access to, and have already signed up maybe years ago. I do have access to find out what email address it is. I cannot give you your password. So what you would have to do is go through the routes. You type in your email, click forgot your password and go through the routes to recover that password. Um, it'll basically reset it, give you some funky password, You'll go or through an email, go in, log in with that password, change it back to something that you like or can remember easily. All right, but I've typed in my actual password here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to login. And that's gonna bring us to our homepage for the Master Gardeners here. Um, 
I've got a couple of extra tabs over here that you guys won't have. The main ones that you guys need to be concerned with are the activities tab right here and the continuing education tab. And I think you guys might have reports. I just can't view it as a student or as a master gardener. I view it as a coordinator. So I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys have reports. If y'all are curious what reports look like, this is this past year's. So I've got Teresa's hours, Jenny's hours are in there. Linda has entered five of her hours uh, in there and continuing education, continuing education, she's entered seven. So there could be some more um, that we'll look at. But anyway, those hours are entered in. Um, so we'll go to activities up at the top tab right here. Go to activities, date of service. Now for whatever reason, they have it in this format, year, month, date or day. I'm sure there's a reason they had to do it that way, but it's a little bit different than just writing, you know, our normal month, day, year. So it's year, month, day, and the easiest way to make sure you do this right, and I'm going to use Gloria's uh, activities as an example. Um, let's see, volunteer hour for the activity on September 8th, 2017, or 2017, helped cut bags for fair um, for the butterfly project that we did. So I'm going to type in 2018-08-09. Now if you wanted to, you could use this here to search for the correct date, so you'd make sure you'd have the, uh, the correct month, and click that. That'll, that'll automatically do it. So let's say I typed it in wrong or something like that. Let me go ahead and, if I can get it to delete. Let's go ahead and delete, open. Of course, it's putting that suggestion in the way. I don't want that suggestion there. See, even I have a little trouble with this program. So don't fret. But you can use these arrows to find last year's date since it's gonna show up with today's date or whatever date we're doing this. So August 9th, I'm sorry, that would be September 9th. September 9th. 2018 or September 8th, 2018, helped cut bags for the fair. All right, this here would be, I'm going to put that as an educational conference or event. How many hours? Gloria says she did one hour. So we're going to type in one hour. Number of contacts. This is how many people outside of the master gardener you made an interaction with. Um, some volunteer hours if you're pulling weeds or maybe you're uh, in public doing these volunteer hours, uh, for example, at the fair or something like that, we might have quite a few contacts in, involved in that. Um, it just depends. So let's go ahead and say when we were doing these cutting bags for the fair, we contacted two people outside of the Master Gardeners and they knew what we were doing. So um, I typed in two under number of contacts. Uh, descriptions of service. Uh, you just typed in what you do. This is here. This year will help those who are entering those numbers in figure out what you did. All right, description of service. Let's go ahead and say helped cut out butterflies for fair projects or project. I think that will be largely sufficient for them, and you would go ahead and save that activity. Now, any of you who see this date of service type of activity, how it's linked, or it has a question mark, if you have a question or how to enter those things in, or maybe how to classify something, one, I wouldn't fret terribly too much about it. There's a lot of stuff, there's not a whole ton of a lot of stuff under here. If it's plausible that it would fall under something, put it under there, all right? Um, let's, so let's go ahead and scroll down. Volunteer service hours, you see that right here? We go up back to the top and see volunteer service hours. If you click that link, it will bring you down to here. You can click, click that link to go back up to the top, but this is the same page. So by clicking that link to figure out what it is, it won't delete the stuff. So if I just scroll back up, you can see that the text and the numbers and everything that I chose and typed in are good there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click save because I. I think I cut out butterflies as well. So save activity. It's gonna say success. Yay, we did it. Um, date, activity, number, hours, contract, or contact. If that all looks correct, great. We'll go on and move on to the next one. If you made a mistake, I'm gonna go ahead and click that. It'll bring you right back and allow you to edit it. 
Um, so let's go ahead and click Save Activity again. And then, made a mistake? No. We'll go back to the home page. All right, so we're back at the home page. I am going to go ahead and click Reports. So now we can see that, if you remember before, I had five hours of activity, and I put that in for working at the Newkirk Garden. Um, you can see that there is now six hours, and six contacts, because I had other contacts as well. If you click under your name, so I'm gonna click under my name, Shannon Mallory, you can go down here and see the actual event. Let me get myself out of the way here. You can see the actual event listed of everything we typed in. Uh, so this was an ed educational conference and event, which is the one we did in the past. And we can go under and do edit if we want to go back and change that. So say maybe we entered something for under the fair and just put it under one day rather than five or six days. If you scheduled, say, Tuesday and you worked the fair and you had entered your hours, you could go back in here and if you did some unscheduled hours and came in on Friday, you could add in, you know, two more hours or something like that. So even though you enter something in and it doesn't quite look right, we can correct it. All right, so I'm going to go back to reports just to show you guys what I see here. And this is going to help us keep track of hours and hopefully be a wonderful, wonderful thing. All right. I think that's it. Whenever you're done, you can log out or just close your window. Um, again, this is how we're going to try to start doing hours. Hopefully this video helps most of you. Um, if not, we'll kind of go through um, maybe having a meeting at the library and working on all this together. Um, I'm going to turn this into a YouTube page or into a YouTube video and send it to everybody. Thanks.